In this video, I'm going to give you a walkthrough of Node-RED, a very powerful automation platform. Make sure you stick around and if you like what you see, hit that subscribe button below and keep an eye out for more videos. Hi, I'm Will from Will Surridge Tech, and today we're going to be looking at Node-RED, an alternative, more visual way of creating automations for your home assistant devices. We're going to do a walkthrough of the interface, and I'll show you some useful nodes that you can use to start creating your automations. If you haven't already, check out the rest of this series, Home Assistant Back to Basics. So let's get going. Node-RED is an incredibly powerful tool that you can use to create automations for your home assistant devices. It will replace, or could be used alongside, the YAML or the front-end automation editor. It provides a much simpler visual approach to automation editing. No more of this pesky brackets or indentation troubleshooting. Node-RED will cover it all for you, kind of, within reason. The one thing with Node-RED is you need to understand the jargon, and there's quite a lot of jargon. Now, there's nothing wrong with the built-in automation editor in Home Assistant. In fact, many people prefer to use it. But personally, I prefer Node-RED. I find that the built-in editor is a bit too linear and constrained in its approach, and it's also not as visual in terms of implementation. What if I want certain things to happen on certain occasions, but I also want different paths with different conditions? It all gets a bit confusing inside the automation editor, but with Node-RED, it's very clear. To install Node-RED, you just need to download it from the add-on store. You can watch my complete video on add-ons for more information on that, but that's the basic setup process. Once downloaded and installed, you can launch it and it should appear in your sidebar. In here you can click it and it will open up. It'll take a little while to load the first time, but it's much quicker after that. On the left-hand side, we've got nodes. These are all the things that do something, basically. You have no to create an automation, you use nodes and you join them together. Along the top, we have what Node-RED calls flows, but I call them pages because it gets a bit confusing if you call them flows. But Node-RED calls each page a flow. And on the right-hand side, we have a useful sidebar. On the first page, we've got info about the nodes that are being used inside the different flows. We've also got a debug page. This is very useful when creating automations, especially if you're creating some complicated ones with various different bits of information being passed down the chain or through the flow. Um, and this is a great place to help you troubleshoot your automations, basically. And then we've got a few other tabs, but I don't really know what they do and I've never used them, so I wouldn't worry about them, to be honest. On the top right, we have our menu button, the hamburger thing. Now this is very useful for importing or exporting flows. You might want to import some flows that I've demonstrated in my videos, and then you can import them and, and make edits to them, but you can see them in front of you. Or you can export your flows to other people to help them out, or to get some help on, the, on yours. Below that, we have a button called Manage Palettes. Now this is a very useful button. So palettes are a collection of nodes for one specific thing. So you can see we've got the Home Assistant palettes, which are basically all the nodes for Home Assistant, We've also got a functions palette, which is all the kind of function nodes, and there are various other ones built in. But you might want to install some custom palettes. Think of it a bit like the hack store. So there are lots of different custom palettes that you can use for different devices. So you can integrate them directly into Node-RED, rather than doing everything through Home Assistant. The palettes that I like to use are the Evo Home palette and the Sonos palette, as it just gives me easier and quicker control over those devices. Sometimes there are some things that aren't opened up or available within Home Assistant because of the API that Home Assistant is using. But in Node-RED, sometimes they are available. So certain services you might not be able to do in Home Assistant, but you can do directly through a palette in Node-RED. So it's worth thinking about that before you go ahead and use Home Assistant for all of your things. Once a palette is installed, it will appear in your list of nodes on the left, under its own palette, surprisingly enough. Depending on what automation you're trying to create, depends on what node you're going to end up using. 
but I'll walk you through a few common nodes that I use all the time in my automations. The first one, of course, is the events all node. Now this is a great node for capturing anything and everything that happens in Home Assistant. There are some things that don't have entities. For example, NFC tags or widgets in your, on your phone screen. These things won't, don't have an entity, so can't just pop up as a sensor that has changed state or a billion that's just changed state. So instead you've got to use the events all tag or the events all node to capture that information to trigger your automations. Now you can filter this by the event type or by using a switch after the event node um, to filter down all the events. Otherwise you're just going to get constant streams of events whenever anything changes within Home Assistant. The next node is the event state node. The event state node is the most common way you're going to trigger your automations. You just need to add an entity ID and the state that you want and then when that happens it'll start the flow. For example, if you want your input boolean to turn on and that to start the flow, then you just write your input boolean and on and it will start the flow. It's as simple as that. Next up is the current state node. This will check the state of a different entity. For example, if you only want your automation to happen if the door is open, then once the automation is triggered, it will then go to this node and if this node is on, then it will continue. Or if it's not on, then it won't. You can either choose to set a value in the current state node and trigger based on that, or you can choose to use a switch value afterwards. So for example, if you only want to have it to happen if the temperature is between a certain set of values or above a certain set of values or whatever, you can use the current state node and then put that into the switch node and then it will trigger different paths based on that data. So the thing that you're going to use to actually do something is most likely going to be the call service node. This is when you can call a service to Home Assistant to get something to happen basically. And in here you're going to need to enter your domain, your service and your entity ID. So the domain could be a light for example or a switch, the service could be to turn on or turn off and then the entity ID of the device you'd like. So a light turn on light.cave will turn on my light.cave, surprisingly enough. And then once it gets the signal, then it will trigger that. We can also add data to these. Now data is basically any form of information you need or you want to pass on for that service to happen. So when you type in your service, it'll give you a list of the different data options you have below. For example, the brightness or the color temperature or the effect of a light. Now these need to be formatted in JSON. JSON is fairly similar to YAML, so don't get too worried. And there are plenty of translators out there on, online where you can copy your YAML in and out comes JSON. But basically it needs to start and end in a curly brace. And then each bit of data needs to be comma separated and any text needs to be in speech marks. So for brightness, it would be speech marks, brightness, colon, and then the value you want. And then comma, any other attributes that you want to add in as well. Very simple, don't worry about it. I won't go into detail about them, but you're probably also going to be using the delay node, the wait until node, and the switch node. They all kind of do what they say on the tin. So have a play with them, I guess. So a way an automation works in Node Red is a message is sent down these paths through nodes and when it hits a node, that node happens, basically. And these all have message parameters. So each automation, when it's triggered, will have a message.payload and a message.data. You can also choose to set up other sorts of messages if you wanted to track information through your node or through your automation, I suppose. You can also use what they call flow and global messages if you want that information to be available to either the whole page, a flow message, or the whole of Node Red, a global message. I'd be careful about using these just because if you use them, then you may end up overwriting them somewhere by using them again and it all gets a bit complicated. So try and keep things within one automation if you can. 
So you might have seen in my heating boost automation, if you haven't already, check out the video, that I use various different messages to trigger different things, because I want to gather all the information at the start for my boost duration and the room and the temperature and everything, and I want to gather it, but I don't want to use it straight away, so I need to put it into different message sections and then use it later on in the flow. So all message information will be carried as one, and then you can kind of dip in and grab the information you want later on. There are two nodes that will really help you in the creation of automations, the trigger node and the debug node. The trigger node pretty much does what it says on the tin. You just join it to the start of your automation or wherever you want, press the button and it will trigger the node and the rest of the flow. That means you don't have to go up and shut the door all the time if you want your automation to happen or turn the lights on all the time for them to turn back off again. The other useful one, arguably more useful, is the debug node. Now you can plop this anywhere in your automation, just tag it in as well, and anything, any message that passes through it will pop up in your debug window on the right. You can choose to either view the whole message output or just certain parts of it. So if you're wondering why your message dot start time somewhere disappears within your automation, you can view the whole message output and see that actually it's not called message dot start time, it's called something else, for example. You can place as many of these debug nodes as you like, make sure you name them so you don't get confused. And then you can see what's happening along the path of your automation and where the signal gets stopped. As for node red etiquette, of course, it is personal preference. I like to sort my automations based on what they're doing. So I've got lighting, heating, scenes, and various other little bits that go on. And that means I can find them quickly, I suppose. But I know that some people like to sort their automations based on room or other things, whatever, whatever works for you, but make sure you keep it organized. Otherwise, you're just going to get lost in flows. The other thing is I'd highly recommend adding a comment to the start of your automations. Just stick it above the start node and write what the automation does. Otherwise, you're going to have absolutely no clue what any of your automations do and you're going to end up getting really fed up with them and just deleting them and starting again. So a little comment with the name and you can also add notes in there about what it's meant to be doing and what might be working, what might not be working, what you need to fix, that kind of thing. It gives you a nice reference of for that automation. If you've got a big, long, complicated automation, you can also add comment nodes to different sections of it if they're doing specific things. For example, this section controls the hue lights, this section controls the sonar speakers. And it just helps you read these nodes and these flows and these automations and makes the most of the visual editor, I suppose. That's the beauty of Node Red is it's a visual editor. And if you don't give yourself visual keys and cues, then you're not really gonna know what's happening. I would also highly suggest creating an input Boolean for all of your automations, especially all the kind of key automations. That means you can manually turn them off and stop them happening. All you need to do is create that input Boolean and then add a current state node straight after your trigger. And if the input Boolean is on, then you continue with the automation. If it's off, then it just doesn't do anything. It just means that if you've got a buggy automation and it's really annoying you, you can just turn it off until you have time to fix it. It gives you that little extra bit of control without having to destroy the automation or go into Node Red every time. There is so much to Node Red, but this is a beginner's video, so I'm going to stop here. I highly recommend you just dive in head first and try it out. Create some automations, see what happens, use your debug nodes to find out what's going on where, and you'll, you won't regret it. You'll get more and more comfortable and you'll start building more and more complicated automations. It's so powerful. Make the most of it. As always, if you need any help or want to reach out, then leave me a comment here or hit me up on social media, either Facebook or Instagram. And if you've got any ideas of videos, then also let me know anything you'd like me to cover and I'd be more than happy to, to have a look into it and add it to the list. So there we have it, Node Red, a basic overview. Make sure you hit that subscribe button below and click the bell icon to find out more about My Smart Tech and how you can build yourself the ultimate smart home.